Hello, Happy New Year and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to start with a small confession. I have never actually been to computer electronic show, the CES. Never in my life. Because for most of my career, I saw it predominantly as, as a consumer show, a lot of spectacle, a lot of devices, a lot of noise. But this year, I didn't go either, <laughs> but for a, for a very different reason. After a year with far too much travel and having started, having just started my new role at Lenovo on the 1st of December, I made a very conscious decision to stay put, focus on onboarding and, and watch some of the CES 2026 keynotes quietly from home. And I'm really glad I did that because what came out of CES this year was not a consumer story, not a consumer story at all. It was a commercial story, a, a, I would say even a platform story. And a surprisingly clear one. The big takeaway from CES 2026 is this. AI has crossed an important threshold. It's no longer theoretical exercise, a playground for early adopters. It's now reshaping the entire industries. And for the first time, we are able to deliver the compute power required to bring all these intelligent systems into daily life and into real business as well. And the change is, and, and, and this changes everything. Lisa Su from AMD, the AMD CEO, has even put a precise number on the power needed for future AI. In the next five years, the world will need 10 Yota flops of compute. A Yota flop, that's 10 to 24th power operations per second. I don't know about you guys, but it's for me, it's impossible to visualize such a number. So the simplest way, simplest way to understand is by comparison. It will represent roughly 10,000 fold increase in compute demand compared to 2022. That's not a linear growth, that's a structural shift. <clears throat> but we are we are able to deliver that. And once you understand it, much of what we saw at CES starts to make sense. You don't reach the Yota scale by launching a slightly faster processor. We had to rethink the infrastructure altogether. And that's exactly what happened, what was announced this year at CES. The industry has clearly moved beyond talking about single individual CPUs and GPUs. The conversation has shifted to AI racks, AI factories, and full stack platforms. And the real question is no longer what processor are you using? It's now how do you build, power, cool, and operate AI at industrial scale? AI has moved from a piece of software into infrastructure. There is an important realization behind the shift. For, year, for years, AI progress was really constrained by algorithm, data availability, and imagination. That's no longer the case. Today, AI is constrained by very physical realities, power delivery, thermal density, cooling efficiency, and operational reliability. Modern AI platforms are therefore engineered not just for performance, but for inference per watt, thermal control, and continuous operation. And that's why CES felt fundamentally different. Here's where the story becomes even more interesting. At the same time that AI is scaling up massively in data centers. It is also moving closer to us, closer to where the data is created, closer to where the decisions are being made, closer to where trust and privacy matter. 
And that was the second major theme of the CES 2026 I was able to pick up. The future of AI is hybrid and personal. Intel and AMD made this point very clear with the latest platforms, Core Ultra, Ryzen AI Max. What matters here isn't just the raw performance, but the inclusion of dedicated AI engines, NPUs, directly on client devices. This will enable AI that can run locally with low latency, with full context, and without constantly sending sensitive data to the cloud. For consumers, it's nice to have, but for enterprises, this is critical. It means AI can now operate inside your security boundary on your data in real time. This is how AI becomes usable and trustworthy at scale. This shift also changes the nature of AI itself. We are moving beyond generic assistants towards personal and enterprise agents. AI that understands your workflows, your environment, your, your data. The novel Kira is a good illustration of this direction, not as a standalone feature, but as a concept. An AI availability that can operate consistently across your phone and your PC, securely managing context and data across devices. That's not consumer AI, that's enterprise-grade personal intelligence. The third major theme I picked from CES builds directly on this, because AI is also no longer confined to screens and interfaces. It is entering the physical world. And the key enabler here is simulation. NVIDIA's introduction of Cosmos, a foundation model designed to generate synthetic 3D data marks an important inflection point here. Machines cannot learn the real world from a text and images alone. They need to understand space, movement, physics, and cause and effect. Synthetic environments allowed robots and autonomous systems to be trained safely, efficiently at that scale long before they even enter uh, and operate in, in the real world. AMD has also has reinforced this direction with Marble, the 3D generative model capable of creating navigable digital words from just a handful of images. And once AI understands space and physics, its relevance expands dramatically into manufacturing, logistics, transportation, and infrastructure. Now, all of this progress creates a new challenge. If AI leaves, in massive data centers, at the edge, on PCs, on phones, and increasingly in vehicles and machines, who coordinates it? You don't want a fragmented intelligence. You don't want conflicting agents. You don't want, you definitely don't want 10 disconnected versions of the truth. What you need, what you will need in, is an orchestration, one intelligence across many devices, governed structures, and structured and consistent. This is where the conversation shifts from technology to platforms. And this is where Lenovo's role will become particularly, particularly relevant because Lenovo operates across entire continuum, from AI factories and data centers to edge systems, to the PCs and devices people use every day. Few companies can credibly span all of those layers. Even fewer can connect them coherently. The novel strategy and strength is not just breadth, it's, in, it's the integration. A portfolio designed to support multiple silicon partners, multiple deployment models and hybrid architectures by design. That matters because the future of AI is not uniform, it's hybrid, it's context contextual and it must adopt to how organizations actually work. work. So watching uh, CES from home gave me a very clear perspective. That was not a show, consumer show about devices. That was not about show about AI someday. <laughs> it was a show about AI becoming operational, operational now. AI computer is now 
foundational, local as well as central, and increasingly embedded in the physical world. And the winners will not be those with the biggest models, but those who can turn this complexity into usable, scalable platform. That ultimately is the real message I have picked up, picked up from CES. And it's one I'm genuinely excited to help shape from the inside in my new role at Lenovo. Thank you for listening and see you soon.